I got to say, typically with these kind of secondary WWE network events that if I've got one to two matches that I'm actually really invested in or actually really care about, then I'm like, it, it could work. It could be okay. Heading into Clash of Champions on Sunday, Gold Rush. I got, what, three and a half matches that I care about quite a bit? I'll take that. Now, obviously, there's one match that I'm going to care about the most. Then there's another match that's like one step down, but significant in my level of care. And then one or two others I'm kind of interested and intrigued by. And most of the rest of the show, I can just take it or leave it. But at this point in time, in today's WWE climate, if that's what I can get, you know, then it, it, it's not the worst thing in the world. You know, the big theme of this show is apparently every match is going to be defending a title of some kind. It's just kind of sad the fact that you have this many belts that you can build out an entire show full of championship matches. Because it just can get to be a little too much at some point. Uh, I believe the pre-show match is going to be Selena Vega taking on Asuka for the Raw Women's Championship. And some of you probably are wondering or complaining even about Asuka being on the pre-show. Well, the reality is, is Selena Vega really hasn't done much. When you look at some of the other matches and whether or not they have some type of story or not, um, you know, one, does this really have that much story behind it? Maybe you could look at other matches on the card and question how much story they have behind it, and that's a valid question. But two, it's kind of one of these things that if every match on the show is going to be a championship match, then one or two of the championship matches by default are going to have to be on the pre-show. And any more doesn't really matter. So just take what you get. It's a good spot for Zelina Vega to show off what she can do. Um, now, obviously, she's shown quite a bit in terms of her managerial skills, but now here's a chance for her to show what she can do in the ring on a bigger time WWE stage. So a big moment for her. Transitioning over to the main card, you've got the Riot Squad taking on Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler for the Women's Tag Team Championships. Ugh. You could have put this on the pre-show. I'm sorry about what I just said with Selena Vega and Asuka. This match could have been on the pre-show. We really didn't need it here. You think the Riot Squad really has any chance here? I mean, come on now. Just saying. A U.S. Championship match, Apollo Crews taking on Bobby Lashley again. You know, this is a half match that I care about because it's got the Hurt Business involved. Are they going to do anything with that stupid retribution group? T-Bar! T-Bag! Slapjack! Snowball! The hell are their names? Dumb. Stupid. Idiotic, moronic, and Riri. That's the group's names. Stupid. Dare you. Anyways, you would assume Bobby Lashley will win here and retain? But who knows what the hell this company will do? I, I have no idea whatsoever. SmackDown Tag Team Championship match is Lucha House Party taking on Cesaro and Shinsuke Nakamura. You would certainly think that Cesaro and Shinsuke will retain here since they've been teasing... Uh, beef between Grand Metalik and uh, Kalisto. I don't know what the hell they're trying to really do here, but you would think that Cesaro and Shinsuke would retain here. Um, you've got the triple threat ladder match for the Intercontinental Championship, and this certainly is a match that I care about quite a bit. You've got AJ Styles taking on the pretender, the imposter IC champion Jeff Hardy, taking on the reigning and defending Undisputed in my mind, Intercontinental Champion, never lost his title, never lost. You can't use the 30-day rule anymore. We threw that out the window for Brock freaking Lesnar, Sami Zayn. Now, this match has the potential to tear shit up. You got three guys that can potentially do really good things in a ladder match. And beyond that, I've got a story that I'm actually invested in. Sami Zayn is the one true rightful Intercontinental Champion. And coming out of Clash of Champions, Vince, Kevin, what's up, Jeff? Let me put it this way, Bugs. Only one person should be walking out Intercontinental Champion Sunday at Clash of Champions, and that is Sami Zayn. 
He's already the champ. That's a crack anyways, and he's got to defend his never relinquished, never lost Intercontinental Championship here. It's a crack. A crack! A ladder match and a triple threat? That's bullocks. Straight bullocks. It is an anti kanucker anti-Syrian conspiracy. It's horrible. Horrible. I'm really looking forward to that match. Raw Tag Team Championships. Andrade and Angel Garza uh, taking on the Street Profits. Am I really looking forward to this one? Not much. Are they going to finally do the split with Andrade and Garza here? Um, I don't know. And if they don't really have Selena Vega with them, what's really the point? So I'm cool with Street Profits retaining. Let's keep it moving. Your SmackDown Women's Championship match is interesting, although I don't know that I care that much about it. But Nikki Cross versus Bailey. Where do you go here? Do you have Bailey win this match clean? And continue on her reign unquestioned and undisputed as long as reigning SmackDown Women's Champion. Or do you get creative and you have Sasha Banks return and you yoke her up and cost her the strap? I hope it's the first one. Let's not go there with that second part just yet. Because Sasha Banks got her ass whooped a couple of times in a couple of weeks. Having her come back and already yoke up Bailey just feels like it's too early. There is just no reason to rush this right now. Just bide your time. Bide your time. I would certainly hope that Bailey retains coming out of this. Because the only thing worse than thinking about them rushing Sasha Banks back just to do something with these two is the thought of Nikki Cross as SmackDown Women's Champion. Oh, Mr. Pukey says, nah, I'm good. Uh... Your two world title matches. First, the ambulance match for the WWE Championship. Randy Orton versus Drew McIntyre. Now, admittedly, I haven't exactly been watching Raw much lately, and that is to my benefit. Thank you, Monday Night Football, for giving me a reason not to watch, and you know, just three hours of that crap is just too much. But I am interested in what they do here with Orton and McIntyre and the fact that you've got a stipulation out like an ambulance match. Now, you would think that would set up well, for McIntyre to win, and probably does. But don't dick tease me like this, WWE. Don't you do it. Don't you dare do it. Orton is this close to being champion. This close. And if you pull the trigger now, you only got about six-ish months until WrestleMania. That's really not that far away if you think about it. You could bring back somebody... In the Royal Rumble as a surprise entrant. Oh, I don't know. Maybe a John Cena. And have him win the Royal Rumble. And y'all already know where I'm going with this. Breakfast Club Brawl. Breakfast Club Business. WrestleMania. John Cena versus Randy Orton. For the WWE Championship. Triple H is the guest referee. Like, who says no? I realize a lot of you are immediately going to take to the comments. I said, would you like me to keep more figures of fire? And say, no, 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 no. To which I say, ding dong, you're wrong. I'm right. And you, you damn well good and well know it. You know it! But this match could be pretty good. You know, probably will leave us with a slightly more satisfying finish uh, than the, <laughs> the roll-up finish we got at SummerSlam. Um, so I'm curious what they see, see what they do there. So there's another one of the matches that I am pretty intrigued by. Maybe you have Keith Lee running and interfere. Just a thought. Um, but then we get to what must be the main event, what has to be the main event, because there is no other choice. And that is Samoan family business. Jey Uso versus Roman Reigns for the undisputed Universal Championship. My God. While this story all pieced together very quickly, man, is it working, it's connecting, it's hitting on all cylinders. I am so geeked for this on Sunday night. I am so excited for the potential, the possibilities of what could happen in this match. I can't even begin to tell you, but I will do what I can. Now, this is a big moment and a big spot for Jey Uso. And Roman even tried to say, take your main event payout and shut up and be thankful. That's right, Jay. Oh, don't be getting froggy. 
Does Roman O jump? He catches you one too many times trying to tiptoe through the tulips, daydreaming and fantasizing about becoming the next world champion. Roman O'll be smell the roses really quick. Superman fun punch and spear. That's what a tribal chief does. I expect these two guys are going to go out there and tear shit up for the 20 minutes or so they're going to have. Now, this is going to be clean. This is going to be great. And at the end of the day, Roman is going to do what Roman's going to do, which is walk out via undisputed, uh, easy for me to say, the reigning, defending, undisputed universal champion of his island. I'm really looking forward to this. Like, it is interesting. When you take a character they get people invested in, another character they get people invested in, put them in a story that has a lot of elements that make sense. You've got history. You've got so many other things here. Like history, when you talk about wrestling, history so often is a great natural storytelling device that you don't have to do a whole lot else. You just build off of that history and let the magic happen. And so far these past few weeks... This stuff has been absolutely outstanding. Mwah! C'est magnifique. And it's been a heck of a ride for you these past few weeks, Jay. You've gotten some of that main event rub. You've gotten some of that main event spotlight. You've gotten a chance to step out of the shadow of your twin brother, Jimmy. That's great and fantastic. But I hate to tell you, dog. Come Sunday night, reality sets in. He's tried to warn you. He's humored you. Played along with it. But you just don't want to listen. You'll find out on Sunday night. You mess with the tribal chief. You get the spear. It did not come out the way it probably felt like it should have. But whatever, it doesn't matter. We're talking about Roman Reigns here. It's fantastic. I expect Clash of Champions to be an up-and-down show in this sense. Some of the matches are going to just stink or I just won't care about, and then it'll be on some of the matches I really do care about to deliver big. And if they deliver big, I could be coming back on here Sunday night and giving a relatively positive review of this show. And I certainly hope to be doing so, and in some ways I actually kind of expect to be doing so at this point. Unless they get squirrely with these damn match finishes. They get squirrely with these match finishes... You've been warned, WWE. I'll be ranting and raving like a madman come Sunday night. So anyways, smash that subscribe button. Click the bell. What the hell? So that way you're notified of future videos. Remember, I'm the Schleg Daddy, and this is OTR Essential. Not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Let me know what you expect to see happen on this show. Let me know how much you're enjoying this babyface run of Roman Reigns. And I will see you after Clash of Champions Gold Rush on Sunday night for the big review. Woo!